we're at the airport and someone holding up this big queue. <laughs> so that's Darren, our crewman. He's checking his empty esky in. Anyway, he and I were on our way from Brisbane to Cairns for a couple of weeks heavy tackle marlin fishing. Yeah, so thanks for joining us. Um, we've basically got a two week fishing trip uh, right up the ribbon reefs, sort of all the way to Lizard Island and then back to Cairns again. So I might be biased, but the boat we're meeting is probably one of the <laughs> best little Caribbean 35s in the country, having had my company do a full refit on it a few years back. <laughs> so there's a gym and this is the Skidgy. He got there a day early, so the boat's all provisioned and ready to roll. So after a nice restaurant meal the evening before, we got up and got out of there as quick as we could. This would be Skidgy's eighth season and I've joined as the skipper for Jim each time and Darren or Squid Lips as he's better known, our crewman has been with us on a lot of those trips as well. So the plan was to basically fish our way north up towards the middle of the reef, uh, being sort of that number five ribbon reef east of Cooktown. But before that, we thought we'd try some of the little bottom fishing grounds we have, see if we can get something for the table. There's a little tiny little spot here that we pick up nanny guys on. These were a lot smaller than normal, but they're legal and we get a feed out of it. It's little, but it's nice. So with dinner taken care of, it was time to start trolling north. Initially we ran lures, just so we could cover some country. There's a few boats around, that's Biggles over there, well known captain. That's the Huntress and her game boat, Mai Tai. 72 merit absolute beautiful boat anyway as the afternoon progressed it was time to get the dead baits out and start to get a bit more serious little did I know what was about to happen well that was incredible we just had about a 600 pounder come up on the tuna missed it head right out of the water and then over the top of it tail thrashing as it went back in came back again did it again missed it and on the third bite it got it, pulled about 100 metres off, but uh, we pulled the hooks on it. God, you forget how big these things are and how aggressive the bite is. So good. Anyway, we're coming into the bite zone now. It's only one o'clock. We're east of Escape Reef. See how we go. So I showed my boys that video and they said, mate, no, no picture, no proof. But it just all happened too quickly to video. Anyway, no more action that afternoon. And we made our way up to about number three, I think it was, Ribbon Reef, where we had the evening. Now Squid Lips is a master on his drone, and you'll see he gets some great footage through this video. Braver man than me doing this around all those rods and outriggers. Look at that big thing. A big one, it's a big GT or something. Yeah, a GT was in here before. Always plenty to see around the lights on an evening anchored behind the Great Barrier Reef. Anyway, the next morning, it was time to see if we can try and catch some more bait for the marlin fishing. And the occasional coral <laughs> trout, always a bonus. Oh, there's a second one behind it. <laughs> He's coming for it. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> oh, he's on it. He's on the pink. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so the Cairns heavy tackle fishery is traditionally a dead bait, a trolled dead bait fishery. Um, but you can catch them on lures, we do quite often because we run out of bait but um, the start of the season like this for us a two-week season is uh, about getting as much 
you know, scaly mackerels like these ones as we can into the freezer just to uh, free us up for more activities in the mornings. So basically our days up here are in the mornings we go off and catch some bait, top up the supplies, then we try and get a swim in, a bit of a spearfish if we can, like we're doing here, just having a, a relaxing lunch. And then, you know, traditionally you don't start marlin fishing up here until after lunch really. I mean, you know, anywhere from about 11 a.m. onwards. But you can get out as late as 1, 2 o'clock and still be in the, the, the main bite zone. You know, they'll bite right up to sunset, really. So with lunch out of the way, we ducked out around the corner of the reef and got the baits in the water. I realised the other day, 1981 was my first year up the reef, so that makes it 40 years I've been coming up to this area, to the ribbon reefs between Cairns and Lizard Island, marlin fishing. I only missed a few, really. So it's a great feeling. This place is a big part of my life. Just love it. Everything about it. At any second, I could have a thousand pound marlin jump on back there. Yeah, so the reason I'm lucky enough to have fished up here for so long is because my father did 44 consecutive seasons with his game boat and mothership. At least it turned a reel. <laughs> and now with Dad retired, Jim Nasty barracuda has filled that void for me. <laughs> so yeah, very lucky. <laughs> Come on, hop out now. So the good weather continued, and with the bait freezers looking well stocked, gave us the opportunity to go and do some reef fishing. <laughs> One of Jim's passions is catching coral trout on the Great Barrier Reef. And one of our passions is eating his coral trout risotto. <laughs> Are there sharks on him? I don't know, mate. But he's coming back with a whopper. I'll come down. This one a video. Look at that. So after a swim and lunch, it was out to start trolling. And, uh, as you can hear one of the crew yelling down there, we got a fish on. Sadly, it all got tangled up and foul hooked. <laughs> yeah, at least 150. <laughs> <laughs> Tried something a bit different today, went right out wide, it was about uh, 1300 metres deep. I think what happens when there's not a lot of southeast wind like this pushing them up against the reef, they're spread out. So you sort of got to do the miles to see if you can find them. Anyway, it worked. So uh, I'm back in on the edge now. I'm going to fish till about 6 o'clock, so another half hour. You never know, a big one might jump on. Yeah, so we didn't see another fish yesterday, but it was another beautiful day today. A bit of uh, bait trolling again on the way, but we had to go into Cooktown this morning uh, to pick up Jim's boy who was going to join us for a few days. Right. We find we can spend about four days on the skidgy out on the reef, self-sufficient, but after that, it's time to come in and top up the diesel, fill the water tank, a few extra fresh provisions. We've got it down to a Formula One pit stop these days. So this is the uh, wharf at Cooktown, run by Anne. They do a great job, always try and accommodate you on the outside there. So while I washed and attended to a few maintenance jobs, um, we sent Squid Lips up town. He did some provision shopping. And then Jim's boy, Jesse, arrived. And we we're out of there in a matter of a couple of hours, really. So we wasted no time 
grabbing a few more scaly mackerels on the way out. Put the baits out and no sooner had we and Jim hooked up. Again, only a small fish, but it was good little shakedown fish. Let everyone get used to their roles. Well done, boys. Here we go. Woo. Well done. Good work on the leader. And then we virtually only got one bait back in the rigger and we hooked up a second time. Again, a small fish, but it was good to give squid lips a go in the chair. He's caught a few with us over the years up there. And Jim loves pulling on the wire. Of these little ones anyway. I don't think anyone's game to pull on a thousand pounder. So we successfully released that one. How much fun do you have? That was gold. <laughs> well done. Good on you, Matt. Not a bad first little afternoon for Jesse, who had just hopped on board. Darren doing his usual checking if there are any sharks swim. So we woke to another magic day on the reef. And there was a bit of talk that we should go and join the Lizard Island Halloween party this evening. Given we were right up around number seven or eight ribbon reef, it wasn't that big a run, so. We did all our usual daily activities. Nice swim. And then it was out for some marlin fishing. One of the interesting things about our year this year was the lack of other boats. We'd go for days and days without seeing another game boat. But as we got up near Lizard Island, these boats were all working out of Lizard, so it was nice to see some familiar faces. But with the fishing so quiet, we thought, let's get the baits in and go into Lizard and maximise our time in there. It's a beautiful place. Been going there, as I mentioned, for 40 odd years. In fact, Dad was marlin fishing up here in the late 60s, early 70s, and there was not even a resort on the island back then. One of his photos is of a caravan as the only building on the island with Lizard Island spray painted on it. So just with swimming around Lizard, there are some big bull sharks that lurk further out the back of the anchorage. Obviously these tawny sharks are harmless enough, but just be aware of that if you are swimming at Lizard. So the whole Halloween party at Lizard Island is a tradition that's been running for a, a long, long time. In fact, as long as I've been going there, because we used to have so many American crews, it became a thing. Halloween, Lizard Island. Used to be a barbecue on the beach <laughs> with some eskies and all the game fishing crew. Now you get quite a turnout. It's all the island staff and the scientists from the research station that's on the island. <laughs> and then you get someone like that who happens to be our crewman. <laughs> Showing them how to dance. Anyway, in the morning it was much more subdued squid lips as we went ashore for a swim and a bit of a wander. I took him up to show him Mary Watson's cottage remains. Very sad story there. You could Google it, Mary Watson, Lizard Island. It's worth looking at. Then after that it was saying goodbye to that Fleming 65. Freya, who we seem to run into all along the coast and reef. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, we're all a bit excited about the extra coral trout for dinner. Anyway, we went straight out and started heavy tackle fishing and hooked up for Jesse. As you can see, we had a good 20 knots of southeast now, and the forecast was not getting any better for the next week, unfortunately. So sadly this fish came up through its through the hooks and we dropped it. Still there? Jumped him off. We lost him. Bad luck mate. So with a solid 20 to 25 knots and it was high tide at dinner time behind the reef we opted to head into Cooktown. We were gonna go in first thing in the morning, um, but there's not much fun out in the reef at night when you're rolling ear to ear. We had to come in because we were uh, dropping off squid lips and our next crew man was joining us, Nido. So he was due in at about 
10 in the morning, I think. So we said goodbye to one of the boats. Watch them unloading some live trout. And then with Nito on board, we punched our way back out to the ribbon reef. And one of the great things of having Nito on board is watching the poison grace of his tower dive. <laughs> well, how lucky was Squidlips? He got the weather. Nito's now got some uh, shocking conditions, but it never stops us. We just tend to fish down sea more than up sea, which wasn't easy given we were trying to run south again. There were reports of more fish being taken down the bottom end of the reef, so that was our aim to get down to the Linden Bank. Barracuda. As soon as we could. So. Whilst it's not very comfortable when you've got these big southeasters, you know, this is what the whole fleet had been looking for, really. We hadn't had a big southeast blow, which, as I mentioned earlier, tends to push the fish up against the reef for better fishing. Anyway, as we ran across the, the passages, making our way south, we did a bit of fishing along the way behind the reefs. Then it was time to go out and have an afternoon of heavy tackle. Sadly, we didn't see a fish that afternoon. Felt we kind of deserved it, battling on in those conditions. Anyway, we got in behind the reef, found a buoy this time, which was handy, given, the, given how rough it was. So we waited for the tide to drop, got a bit calmer, had a nice dinner, and just generally enjoyed the beauty of the Great Barrier Reef. Next morning, it was about getting south again. Now this is interesting, I just thought I'd leave this in. If you look just off my port bow, you can see a bit of green, that's the, a bommie. Admittedly, it's about three meters down, it's passing now. But just to show you how it's, you really should only be driving daytime up there because we're well outside any of the blue shaded area, which generally represents bommies. So just be aware of that if you're new to fishing up there <laughs> or being around any of the Great Barrier Reef for that matter. Don't trust your charts. Obviously that gaff shot right, wasn't ideal, but he, he should be okay. There was no blood. Happening. Beautiful. Well done, mate. <laughs> yeah, so it was basically a big day running south. We got right down to Ruby, so Ruby Reef, so we, which is probably sort of east of Port Douglas to give you an idea. Anyway, next morning, it was up and into it. Bait fishing and looking for some GTs for the boys to have a bit of fun on. Look at that. Jesse got a nice one. Well done! <laughs> if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times. You won't see a better tower dive the Nido's tower dive on the reef. <laughs> so after swims and lunch, it was time to get out and start 
working our way down to the Linden Bank. Right here we're on the, an area called the Opal Ridge where a lot of very big fish are being caught. And no sooner have we got there than we hooked up. This time it looked very big. Yeah, I actually missed the bite, but the hole in the water that was left is a good indication of this one might be in the vicinity of, you know, 800 plus. So look, you know, we don't pretend for one minute to be a professional crew. We're just a bunch of guys having a really good time. But in saying that, we've caught our share of fish. A few years ago, we were runner-up champion angler at the Lizard Island Comp. So um, it's not our first rodeo. <laughs> Jim's, Jim's caught a few off this boat now that are definitely uh, up around the thousand pound mark. But we're, we're a no-kill boat, I should state as well. We, we don't even have big gaffs on board. We're all about letting them go. So just getting them up and seeing them is, is our fun. Yeah, so this was the fish we've been looking for for the last week and a half, but sadly on that massive jump it threw the hooks. So this fish was right up there. It's not always easy to tell in a video, but anyway, as we all said, what the hell were we going to do when we got it to the boat? We wanted to release it anyway, so... Wow. <laughs> Jeez, you worked out hard. That was a master class. Well done, crew. Oh, those sharks, they're everywhere. There's 30, 20 of them down here. Yeah, so it. it's good that fish got off oh, when it did. Oh, they're everywhere under oh, the boat. Oh, my God. Because these things were waiting for it. Oh, my God, there's so many. Oh, I thought that one was It's just become a real problem. So after the excitement of that big fish, we got our baits back in and before we knew it, we were hooked up again. Still there? Yeah. Hang on to him. That's it. That's it. So we dropped that fish very quickly and made our way back in behind Opal Reef where it was finally we were catching up with some of the game boats that work this area. Well done Nido, Jesse, great effort today oh, boys. Yeah. Oh yeah! <laughs> Maybe two weeks to see one yep. out of the pilot. <laughs> yes, Good luck today. Yeah, but we want to go in late arbor, you know. Yeah, you'll probably miss that late bite. Yeah, so will we mate. Oh, might look beautiful that front. Thanks, see you guys. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, boy. There you go, mate. And the fin fish is over, the closure. There's a quick bottom fish and then out to troll again for our last afternoon. So the Linden Bank was coming alive. You can see they're hooked up and there was birds and bait everywhere. And then we had a nice fish come up here behind this bait. You can see, it's very hard to see the fish, unfortunately. Still there. 
That's why I'm calling it out. The guys yeah, in the cockpit right can't see it at all. He's coming in on it a bit. Good fish. He's a good fish. He had a swipe at it. It's a pretty solid fish. I can't see it now. Anything? Just hold that other one there. Chop off? Chop off? I think so. Put the other one back in the peg. Shark. Let's see if it's a hook on the end. Oh, what do we got? Bitten. Bitten off. Oh, you know, it was a big good bite, like a marlin bite, but it might have been a shark or something. I felt like a pop. Yeah, when it went then. Well, that's us done, eh? Yeah. Well done. What a great hit out. <laughs> anyway, that was an exciting way to end the uh, two weeks up here. So we're heading into Cairns. So thanks for watching. And it, look, if you're keen to try out some of this heavy tackle marlin fishing, I know a heap of guys up here. So get in touch, all the professional crews up here. Get onto the Cairns Professional Game Fishing Association website um, and get a taste of it there. There's a great video on there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, catch you next time. Cheers.